Um, Gossip Sub is a LIP2P based protocol. Um, it is a local reputation based system in which um, peers add only those neighbors who they are sure are good behaving and have high scores. And uh, they use that to um, pass on full messages rather than uh, sending full message to everybody, in which case that would be flood publishing. So this helps to uh, disseminate uh, messages fast while keeping a low overhead. Um, it has been claimed resilient against civil attacks in a previous work by Vizio et al. Um, it has been tested for resilience in test ground and uh, the specification for Gossip Sub is given in prose English. So in our work, we um, implemented a full executable specification of Gossip Sub in ACL2S, which is a very powerful first order theorem prover um, that has been used uh, quite, uh, quite a lot in industry in uh, the areas of um, hardware verification and uh, requirement analysis. Um, we can use this executable uh, spec to uh, model orbit uh, topology, um, which allows us to have fine-grained control over um, events, messages, behaviors, parameters, and weights. And uh, uh, it allows us to try out any configuration that could be used on top of Gossip Sub. We utilized um, this model to Sorry, we cross-validated our model with the original implementation of Gossip Sub, uh, the, specifically the Golang implementation. Um, what we did was we ran the unit tests provided in the Golang implementation in our own model, as well as we type-checked the trace output by the Golang implementation in ACL2S to verify that uh, it's outputting the current, uh, that uh, to verify that whatever uh, it is outputting is actually events. So um, in our work, um, an advantage of this formalization effort was that several discrepancies between the implementation and the prose specification um, were clarified while we were trying to implement it. Uh, we had to regularly uh, be in contact with the protocol labs developers. Um, so, so a lot of discrepancies were settled. Another advantage was that while writing the scoring function, which is used to um, um, judge your neighboring peers whether they are good or bad. Uh, we came up uh, with four properties that were quite evident and we included them as we wrote our code. We believe that these properties are essential against civil attacks because our work is currently under submission. We can't share our code, but we can definitely discuss the results we arrived at. Um, so we tested these properties in context of Filecoin and Ethereum. Filecoin satisfied, um, satisfied all of those properties, whereas Ethereum satisfied only one. And based on uh, these properties and counterexamples that we came up with, we, uh, we were able to generate an attack that uh, exposed certain uh, vulnerabilities. So consider a gossip subnetwork. There are um, three topics, blue, green, and orange. Uh, and, uh, and there are two nodes, A and B, that are in meshes of uh, all three topics and B is trying to keep a score of A. Let's say A is misbehaving and therefore B judges that the score of A has dropped below zero and therefore in the next, in the next heartbeat event, B will prune A from its mesh, which happens as is shown and therefore uh, B is no longer in connection with A. So it's not sending or receiving message, uh, direct full messages from A in any topic. Um, so this was an example of how Gossip Sub works. Now, how the score is calculated is um, we have certain uh, parameters, P1, P2, uh, up till P7, um, that are used to uh, uh, track certain behaviors of the neighbors. P1 is time in mesh. P2 is first uh, number of first message deliveries sent. Um, P3 is number of mesh message deliveries per heartbeat interval. Um, P3B is the same as P3, but it is sticky. That is, it is remembered even after a prune is pruned from the mesh. P4 is the number of invalid messages. P5 is application-specific score. Um, P6 is um, IP collection factor. And P7 is a penalty on certain behaviors. So the ones that are coded as red are bad, that is, we don't want them, they indicate bad behavior, and the ones in blue are good. And 
Since we know these are good and bad behaviors, we multiply them with corresponding weights that are either negative or positive depending upon their behavior. Once we have that, um, they are, uh, so the topic wise uh, parameters are multiplied with their weights and summed over all topics and then they are um, added with the global scores, uh, the global score contributions. And the whole thing is uh, then capped using a topic cap TC. So this is the scoring function that Gossip Sub utilizes. And our work has been to verify this particular scoring function in regard with the, uh, some of the properties. So now we'll be talking about the properties. We wanted properties that were hopefully uncontroversial. But it would seem that any scoring function that claims to uh, be resilient against similar attacks should satisfy um, these properties. Um, so the first property says that um, if the topic score is always less than zero, then eventually the overall score should be less than zero. Um, Ethereum does not satisfy this property, whereas, as, whereas Filecoin does. The second property says that increase in bad performance counters should lead to a decrease in the overall score which again, Ethereum does not satisfy, but it is satisfied by Filecoin. Uh, the third, para the third uh, property states that the increase in good performance counters should lead to an increase in your overall score, which um, Ethereum again does not satisfy and Filecoin does satisfy. Finally, the fourth property says that identical performance counters should achieve identical scores. This was trivial to prove because um, we have used ACL2S, which is a functional programming language, and therefore we have referential transparency that um, allows us to say that um, because the definition is same for both the context, the fourth properties is trivial to prove. Now we'll uh, go over each of these topics and uh, try to reason why that is the case. Yeah. ACL2S. Uh, I have provided a link for that in the first uh, slide. Yeah, so, um, so after we have implemented the whole of Gossip Sub, here is our property. The property says that given A, which is a peer, TP, which is a topic, and counters, um, which is a map from a peer, peer topic to counters, counters can be considered as a record that keeps track of these five counters. Um, we want to prove that if the topic score is less than um, zero, then the overall score, then the overall score is also less than zero. So this is the property that we put it in ACL2S and ACL2S comes back to us with a, a initialization of counters as shown uh, for some peer A. Um, and the topics are color coded for each of the counters. Uh, so th these counters all are for blue, green, and orange. Yeah, so since we have implemented the scoring function, we do have the computational power to evaluate these counters and come up with the score, which comes out to be five. However, notice that if we only calculate the topic-based scores, the blue topic has a score of minus 25, the green one has 22, and the orange one has 7.78. Uh, note that all the weights and parameters that we are using in uh, this computation are, have been derived from the implementation of Ethereum uh, in the Golang implementation. So, uh, so these are actual parameters and values that we arrived at. Based on this data, we can uh, generate an attack in which, as we, uh, as we see, if we maintain a steady um, rate of message delivery in orange and green topics, uh, whereas if we um, decrease the number of mesh messages in the blue topic after a certain time interval, then um, A can be in all of, A can maintain a positive overall score while misbehaving in the blue topic because it has severely constrained its mesh, mesh, mesh message deliveries to B. And B can do nothing about it because A has a positive score. And so A will not be pruned out. However, um, Filecoin does satisfy this property. Why is that? This is because they set their weights such that the, ma the maximum positive score uh, achievable by um, the corresponding weights assigned to uh, positive parameters is less than the penalties issued by the weights assigned for the negative parameters. 
So the penalties are so high that even if you add up the maximum positive score from each of the topics, it is less than any single penalty you get. And that will drive down your uh, overall score below zero. Similarly for property two, we can see that Ethereum uh, has a topic cap. Uh, however, the sum of its uh, score contributions from each other topic can be higher than topic cap. And uh, after that, if some topic, uh, if some, uh, if there is some misbehavior in some topic, it will decrease down its score, but the topic cap uh, will keep it uh, at the same level as it was before, because it's not going below the topic cap. Uh, whereas in Filecoin, there is no topic cap. So any decrease in the score will lead to a decrease in the overall score. For property three, we have the same problem that is because of the topic cap, any increase in the contribution by a certain topic will not actually increase your overall score because it is already capped. So uh, even after the increase, your score will be at the maximum cap. Um, in case of Filecoin, there is no such cap and therefore it can increase. So um, we discussed uh, all the properties that we came up with in context of Ethereum and Filecoin. Now, in the future, what we would like to do is to model the application level over our current um, network protocol layer. That is, uh, when we have both the application and the uh, network layer working together, then we can write properties about both of them in conjunction and come up with more interesting properties to uh, try and find bugs. Um, and this really emphasizes the property de driven development approach. So while writing specification, if we have a view of the properties that our specification would like to um, satisfy, then that would uh, help us to um, really avoid those kinds of bu bugs uh, that, that could arrive from if we had not considered those properties in advance. Um, so what does the community think about it? What are your thoughts? Should we have more property de driven development and formalized uh, approach towards um, Web3 going forward? You, you, yes. you mentioned this tool ACL2. Yeah. I'm wondering like, and it looks like it's a lisp. Right. Yes. Um, so I, I'm wondering, like, is this a similar thing, or like, ha does this have like a similar purpose to like, say, Cock or Lean or Agda or something? That is correct. So Cock is um, is a theorem prover in Lambda Cube. Yeah. Um, ACL2 is significantly less descriptive than that. It's in first order logic. However, it's more automated than that because there are quite a lot more um, uh, useful heuristics that can be utilized to quickly arrive at, uh, quickly be able to prove things. So, um, so yeah, so that is ACL2S. So is it a first order logic? Yes. Okay. Um, and the, like, the, the following question is, so you have these properties, right? And these properties are things that you would like to show that are true or? You also get counter examples, which is oh, not I see. In so, so the parameters that we got were given to us by ACL2S, su suggesting that see, um, this is something that does not specify this property, and using that we could generate our attacks. I see. So it gives you like, like you say, all right, this is something that I would like to have, and here is a, and it gives you back a model yeah, yeah. that breaks it. We we tried to prove the theorem. Yep. It was not proved because there existed certain counter examples which were given to us. Gotcha. By um, the prover. One more question. So there, like, you, you gave an example with the Lisp, yeah. and so I there was like a colon and then like colon topic, for example. Like, yeah, yeah, that slide right yeah, there. Yeah, these yeah. are these are types. These are user defined types. We uh, define them using dev data, and uh, a good thing about these types is that they are. Uh, um, they can be defi defined using any function or recognizer. So you could have any arbitrary function that uh, given any object in the universe of ACL2S, if it returns true or false, then it can be used to certify a type. And uh, I'm sorry, this might be like a super common feature in Lisp and I mm -hmm. just haven't done much Lisp. Um, so like, is there a type checker that's running through a compile time or is this something that's like type checked at runtime or? Yeah, so when you define a type, you get an enumerator and a type checker. And uh, when you are specifying the property, um, what it tries to do is to, um, is to uh, come up with 
um, witnesses that satisfy those types. So, but yeah, but Lisp is an interpreted language. It's not compiled. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, you said there is a cap of score for each topic, but that's not in the spec. Or is it the same? So in the spec, you have a cap for each value, but you don't have a cap for the entire topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cap is for the entire score. It's not for each topic. And therefore, we have the problems with property two and three. Uh, because I have the specs of the sub right here, I don't see any cap on the score. So uh, we can talk later and so okay. try to. Yeah, this is derived from the English prose uh, specification of Gossip sub. Okay, yeah, we'll check. Right. Okay, yeah. Good. Um, you might have covered this already, but how do you how do you know that these properties add up to civil resi civil resistance or strictly imply civil resistance? Yeah. So um, so for the first attack that we showed, um, the neighbor A for B was essentially acting as a civil. Uh, that is, it worked for some time, um, passing messages at a, at the required delivery rate uh, to gain some positive score, and after that, it um, dropped its message delivery in, in a particular topic uh, while maintaining that positive score. So, so A was essentially acting as a Sybil. Got it. But do you, do you have a sense of how that adds up systemically across a large graph that many Sybils can join? Or is there, is there a provable, how does the provability extend to like the, the broad phenomenon of many, many different nodes interacting? Yeah, so in our proof, we utilized a very small um, scenario where we just had three peers connected in all topics with each other. One of them was the observer, other was the Sybil. But uh, you can extend it easily. You can consider that B is, cons is covered all around by Sybils like A. All of them uh, start behaving in the same manner, and therefore uh, that constitutes a flash attack against B. Uh, flash eclipse attack, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I have a question. Is it's uh, is it possible to abstract away, like uh, within a library or something, the complexity of uh, this formal verification and then using some kind of CI that could be uh, run automatically in, in the somewhere in the repository that we have? Uh, let me understand the question correctly. Uh, you are saying to right. reuse the already implemented code in ACL2S? Yes, to, to, to make sure that the future implementations are also uh, compliant with, uh, with yeah, the properties. Yeah. Um, you, actually, there is a recent work on this by Andrew, who is sitting right next to you. So. Check. So, uh, so yeah, he, he has worked on worked on uh, witness dating, uh, witness generating data data types. Um, for the purpose of uh, integrating this with other languages, uh, I don't think that would be possible because we need to reason about that particular code. Uh, but Andrew does uh, want to say something. A couple, a couple things. One of them is, right, so this is useful for validating implementations, but it's also useful at the design stage of a protocol, right? Like that is something where when you don't have any code, you write a sort of abstract model, like what, um, sort of similar to what, to what Ankit's done, and then you can write down these properties that you might want uh, this protocol to satisfy and sort of tweak things, add additional constraints, or um, change around the property to make sure that it actually satisfies. Um, the properties that you care about, like uh, civil resistance, for example. Um, yeah, we can talk more offline about the yeah, yeah. other stuff. <laughs> yep. So, so a useful thing would be to formalize your specification and then reason about it, and then go on to code it in in your preferred language of choice. Did did this um, impact the, the the English prose spec at all? Did we make any improvements to the spec as a result of some of the ambiguities you found? Oh yeah, we we uh, found that some of the portions of the um, English prose were out of date, in which case we then had to um, look at the implementation because that was more up to date with, um, uh, I mean, in those cases, we had to consider the code as the specification. Um, so, but but right now what we can claim is that we have a formal specification in, in the ACL2S language, which, which is much more non-ambiguous than English, and therefore that can be used as a specification. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So I guess just following on from that, if someone come, if a researcher comes along a year from now, 
will they find the English prose updated and or, and or will they find a link to your formal proof? Uh, I would like it that the that the formalized model be linked. Uh, we are we are working on adding it to the community books of ACL2S. So if you will just um, download ACL2S, you you can find that code in their books as well. Thank you.